Hi, I'm going to show you how the calendar works for teachers and students. Sorry about the audio, I'm recording this on my laptop, so it probably sounds a bit echoey. On the right of each course, you should see a box that says Upcoming Events. If it's not there, it can be added by going down to Add a Block and then choosing it from the drop down list. But it should be there. To add an event, you go to New Event and this sort of dialogue comes up. You've got a few things you have to do. You have to give it a name. You need to nominate the date that the event is going to happen. And if you wish, you can add in the time. Those things are compulsory. The until date is not compulsory, but if you've got something that's uh, going for multiple days or if it's got something like an excursion where you need to know, the kids might want to know when it finishes at a glance, then it's a good idea to put that in as well. The other thing you should put in is some sort of description of the event. And so if you're doing a test notification, you could probably cut and paste from a Word document or from key ideas or um, from part of the text or, or whatever, whatever you normally do in your department. For an excursion, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add in my permission note. If I save changes here, this event would be recorded in the calendar but without a description. So I'm going to put a link to a permission note. And to do that, I just type in whatever I want, click on insert link, and then I need to find the file that I want to add through this, through this system here. Uh, there's my permission note. Upload, insert, and it's there. It's linked, you can see because it's turned blue. So now if I save those changes, on my calendar page, it shows the event and the permission note. On my course page, when students come to visit it, they can see it just there. Now the other thing that they'll see when they log on to the LP is their main page with all of their subjects. So I've got a test student here, a uh, year 11 test student who's enrolled in my um, biology course. And if I scroll down to the calendar, I just need to refresh here. You can see that on the 29th it's turned pink. If I put my mouse over it, it says the event, I can click on it, it takes me to the calendar page and then she can click through to the permission note if she's lost hers uh, or her parents want to see what they're doing. Um, parents could click through to that as well. So I'd recommend this method as a method for putting test notifications on, excursions, incursions, anything else, formative assessment tasks that you're going to do in the class, anything that's paper-based that you don't need to um, have uh, an electronic upload. If someone's handing an assignment electronically, you may well have already done this, lots of departments do use this already, add an activity and if they're uploading a single file, you choose that. If they're uploading multiple files, you'd use that. If you get a single file and you get a similar dialog box, I'd give it a name. I'd put in the description. Now, um, here I will probably make a link like I did before. I'd highlight that link and link that to the assessment task file, which has the rubric and the instructions and all that kind of thing. Then I'd put my date in, and let's say that's due on the 30th, on the 31st, and let's say it's due, give until 5 pm to hand it in. I'm going to, the grade here doesn't really matter, we don't use this as grading, but I'm just going to change it to no grade. I'm going to allow them to resubmit it in case they accidentally upload the wrong thing. That means they can have another go at uploading it. And I'm going to prevent late submissions so they have to hand it in on time. Now, if I save and display that, That would be linked, would be a hyperlink, and there we have it. That 
is now on my IB page where I added it. And I would probably add it in the um, topic that it was required to be added. But students will also see it over here in the upcoming events. You can see the excursion and the pretend assignment, which is actually overdue now because I put the wrong date in. Students, when they log into their home page, this is another one they'd see. I'll just refresh that student. 23rd. Pretend assignment. There's also the uh, conformity upload, which I don't know what subject that's from. Let's click on it. Okay, I'd be psychology already set up. And there's a link there from the psychology teacher, class ID, password, to turn it in, all the important information. So you can see that the student gets access to all of that information on the first page they open up. So this applies to parents as well. They can see exactly what students have coming up, provided that their teachers are adding them in either of the two ways that I just showed. Now the advantage of this over having a separate page in the library which would have the, all of the tasks for a year group is that not every student in every year group is doing every subject. So you might have a year eight student who's doing Chinese and if we had a year eight one there would be all of the French stuff in it as well. And there would be kids doing geography, kids doing history and really there'd be a lot of noise in that document which would be unnecessary uh, and the students wouldn't be able to see just their stuff whereas this is tailored just to the classes that they're in. So I think this is the way forward for us uh, to help parents to see what students have coming and also it's a way for us to organise the materials so students can find them easily. Thanks.